brings us to a segment called Cinema War 2000. Jawheads, we threw this into the Cinema War topic machine. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't believe it. We just asked it to give us a topic. What was the biggest snub of the year 2000? It outputted this. American Psycho or Requiem for a Dream? Matt, you're fighting for American Psycho. And I'm fighting for Requiem for a Dream. Let's get this war going. All right. First, I need to state that both of these amazing movies uh, I count amongst my all-time favorites. Love them both dearly. But between the two, American Psycho has better stood the test of time, permeating into our collective subconscious, endlessly quoted, aped, and homaged. It's part of the pop culture lexicon. Requiem cannot boast the same. Matt, truth be told, I'm also a very big fan of both these films. But the question that has to be asked is this. Was the Academy on Drugs in 2000? They nominated Steven Soderbergh twice for director, once for Traffic, Deserved, and the other for Aaron Brockovich, Asinine. This is Darren Aronofsky's best film, and they missed a chance to nominate him with his great work that year. Right. Requiem for a Dream got its praise at the Oscars in Ellen Burstyn's Best Actress nomination. So where's the snub? Plus, American Snipe... American Psycho gave us Christian Bale. What did Requiem give us besides nightmares? Jared Leto? Hmm. Oh, wait. American Psycho had him as well. Come on. Here's the snub, Matt. I've rewatched Requiem, and I can say this with ease. With ease, Matt. It's one of the best edited films of all time. Split screens, sped up scenes, quick edits. The editing literally distorts reality. Get this, not even nominated for best editing that year. That's a snub. It got an Oscar. Okay, this is about the bigger snub. And I'm sorry, but there is a real problem that exists today, to this day, with the Academy not recognizing the work of women. And it's gotten a little better in recent years, but it was super rampant back then. And if you could go back in time to 2000, a full eight years before Catherine Bigelow won, to become the first and only and at least nominate a woman for best director instead of the same guy twice. And that was a huge glaring snub. Mary Heron was very deserving. All right. American Psycho tackles themes of consumerism and capitalism. And while done creatively, it's not on the same plateau as Requiem's theme of addiction. People watched this movie and were shook It was a movie that was tough to watch, made viewers uncomfortable. Now that is some powerful art. Well, both of these films are amazing. I think we agree on that. But the bigger snub belongs to American Psycho because it is a film that is ultimately rewatchable, unlike Requiem, which is a once and done kind of challenge. Plus, I think Aronofsky still had some maturation to get through before a black swan could emerge. And and I know Jennifer doesn't like that film, but I actually think it's good. It's good. But this was Mary Heron's time. She was that mature filmmaker. She had her full talent to bear and paid her dues with uh, I Shot Andy Warhol. That is the bigger snub. It's a glaring snub. American Psycho. No, American Psycho has its laughs, has its bloody scenes, but it does not affect people like Requiem for a Dream. Mm. Requiem achieves greatness from the performances, the directing, the acting, the musical score, which haunts you. In short, this was and is best picture of the year material. It should have been nominated several times. It was the biggest snub of the year. We are buttonheads here on Cinema War, as we do each and every week. We throw it to our guest, our jury, our executioner. Jennifer Reeder, what did you think of this Cinema War? Well, I mean, you two two, um, both presented very solid cases 